Hello and welcome back. My name is Mitchell Pearson and this is video number three in our introduction to ASA series. In this video, we're going to take a look at really the overview of the ASA Studio, our workspace that's available to us. And we're gonna take a look at the various hubs and what each of those do. If you like this video, hit that like and subscribe button. We would appreciate it. And then also if you want a deeper dive of training in any of these technologies, whether it's training your entire team or if you just want again to get that personal experience, you can take a look at our live boot camps as well as our on-demand learning where we have over 70 classes. All right, with that being said, let's jump right in and talk a little bit more about the workspace itself. Inside of the ASA workspace, we have something known as activity hubs. And those various activity hubs are where we perform the different actions within ASA. Now, if you're watching this and you're like, wait a minute, Mitchell, uh, what's the ASA? Obviously, go back and check out the first video in this series where I talk about the importance of Azure Synapse Analytics and the integration between all of these different services that we're about to mention. So this is what it looks like today, right? As of early 2022, February, kind of March timeframe, this is what the Azure Synapse Analytics workspace looks like when you log in. On the left-hand side, we have all of these different activity hubs. The first one is the Home Hub. The best part about the Home Hub is you can see all of your recently used, uh, essentially, are artifacts that you've worked with, right? So if I've been working with a notebook or I've been working with a pipeline or certain SQL scripts, as soon as I log into my ASA environment, I can, I can see them right there and I can open them up without having to go through all of the different activity hubs to get there, which is really nice. Under the data hub, this is where you see your lake databases, which are used for your Apache Spark, your notebooks. This is also where you see your dedicated SQL pool databases. So if you've created and provisioned a dedicated pool, that's another video in the future in this series, you're gonna see your dedicated pool right there. But also under linked, you'll see your data lakes, right? So any data lakes that are linked to this ASA workspace, and that's what we're gonna be getting into in the next couple of videos is talking about that data lake and that connection there. Any data lakes that are linked, we'll see those right there in the data hub, as well as any integration data set. So if you've worked with data factory, pipelines or data flows, or if you've worked with data flows and pipelines inside of Synapse Analytics, if you've already done that, this is where you find those data sets that you've created. Under the develop hub, this is where we can do things like write SQL scripts. Those can be SQL scripts that query data directly in our data lake, which is a really awesome feature. They can also be SQL scripts that are interacting with our dedicated pool. This is also where you build your data flows, which is a graphical user interface for cleaning and transforming data. And it's also where we build notebooks. So if you are ready to really dive in and start working with Apache Spark and working with notebooks, this is exactly where you do that under the develop hub. Under pipeline, this is where we build out our pipelines. Pipelines are very much like an uh, automated workflow, right? This is where we do our orchestration, perform this activity, perform this activity, perform this activity, and we can kind of control the order in which activities are, oper are operated, right? Then of course, we have a couple of other kind of administrative type hubs available to us, which is Monitor. The Monitoring Hub gives us visibility into all the services that are inside of ASA, our pipelines, data flows, our notebooks, our Apache Spark applications, data flow debugs, all of the great information is right there under Monitor. And quite frankly, when we get to that video later in this series, near the end, you're gonna notice how easy it is to work with. It's very, very well done by Microsoft. And then we have manage. Now manage is where we can do things like create connection managers slash link services is what they're called. Create link services to our data lake, to our SQL database, to our dedicated pools, whatever. This is also where we can create and provision new dedicated SQL pools. This is where we can create our Spark pools. This is where we can add packages to our Spark pools if you need to add NumPy or something like that, which by the way, that's already there. You don't have to do it. But if you have a specific package you wanna add, we go to the Manage Hub. So there's a lot of capabilities within the Manage Hub, including things like adding Azure DevOps or your GitHub repository. You can do that there to link it to that kind of collaboration tool. And that's, for the most part, that's it. That's a real quick overview of all of the different features here. Now, what I want to do is show you how to get into Azure Synapse Studio. In our previous video, we provisioned, right? We created an ASA workspace. In our previous video, we created our Azure Data Lake as well. So it's there and it's ready to go. So in this video, we're gonna dive right in and take a look. So I'll see you in, let's see, I think now, now we're ready. So I'll see you over in 
your web browser of choice. I'm going to be using Google Chrome for this demo. I'll see you there. So I've opened up my web browser and I've already logged into Azure. Remember, you can go to portal.azure.com, right? And you can log directly into your Azure portal. And what I want to do is show you how to navigate to your Synapse Analytics workspace from the Azure portal. So this is kind of assuming you might be a little bit new to Azure. The first thing that I want to do here is I'm going to go over here on the left and choose my resource groups. And then from my resource group, I'm going to choose the one that we're using for this series, which is ASA YouTube series. And then down here, I'm going to go ahead and click on my ASA workspace. And you can notice the ASA workspace a couple of different ways. One by the icon right there, right? You can see the icon also, and I'm kind of in the way. So let me just zoom out for a moment here. There we go. So once you've gone into your resource groups and you've chosen your resource group, you're going to get displayed right here, right? And then down here, this is where you click on it. So the icon is going to tell you that this is your workspace and so is the type. So this is one way to get to the ASA workspace. I can click on that right there. And when I click on it, it's going to open up a new window. And this window right here that just opened up, this is where I can do a lot of stuff, right? Administrative type things, as well as launching the ASA studio, launching my actual workspace. And I do that by clicking right here, right? And so if I go right here and just click open, this is going to launch the Azure Synapse Analytics Studio. However, there's another way to get to this. So a lot of people that work with ASA on a very regular basis don't go through the Azure portal. They don't go to portal.azure.com, search for the resource group, find the ASA workspace. Instead, what you can do is on a tab, when you open up your browser here, you can just type in web.azuresynapse.net, right? And what will happen there is when I type in web.azuresynapse.net, it's going to take me to this screen and it's going to say, all right, what is your default directory? So I would come in here and go ahead and choose Pragmatic Works. It would ask me to choose my subscription here, right? And then I would choose my workspace name and I would go ahead and grab this one right here for ASA YouTube Workspace. All right, so there's two different ways we can get there. We can do it from the Azure portal or you can go to web.azuresynapse.net and it just is a little faster, a lot faster to go this route. But whichever one you want to do, that's totally up to you. Now, we're here. Let's take a quick little overview and a walkthrough of our YouTube environment. Now, this right here is the experience. This is what you're going to see when you first log into your ASA workspace. Over on the left, which is where I want to go, over on the left, we have our navigation hub. I always call this the navigation hub. In the Azure portal, this is called the portal menu. Um, but whatever you want to call it, this is where you find your different options and the different activity hubs we talked about a moment ago. Whenever I log in, I always land on the home hub. And then if I've worked with any recent resources here, I would see them right here. Now, because we just created this workspace in our last video, I don't have any resources yet. But as we work through this series, and this is going to be a pretty lengthy series through 2022, we're going to see a lot of resources that appear there. So let's talk through the various hubs, right? So under the data hub, if I click right here, you'll notice that the first thing you're going to see is your workspace and it's empty. It's empty because I don't have any lake databases that I've created through my Apache Spark applications, through my notebooks. It's empty because I don't have any dedicated pools. But if I wanted to create a dedicated pool, I can either go to manage or I can click right here and I can tell it that I want to create a SQL database. Once again, this is not an Azure SQL database, your regular relational database that maybe you're familiar with. This is a dedicated SQL pool, a massive parallel processing database. We're going to get to a video on that, I promise, probably about seven or eight videos into this series. I don't know exactly when yet because I'm adding videos as we go. Um, and then down here at the bottom, I can also create an integration data set. I can connect to various data lakes by doing connect to external data. I can also browse the gallery. Now, if I go over to linked, this tab right here across the top, that brings me to where I can see under the link tab. This is where you see all of your data sets. This is also where you see your data lake. And if I expand the data lake right here, and then I pull this over a little bit, you'll see that this is the name of my data lake right here. It is the primary data lake for this ASA workspace. Remember from our previous video, every single Azure Synapse Analytics workspace must have a primary data lake. And that's exactly what this is right here, my primary. You can have other data lakes attached though, and you do that by coming up here to the top and you just add other external data sources. Now, 
there that's a little complicated because when you add them there are certain permission things we need to do on the data lake we need to go into the role-based access control and we need to make some changes there and i'm going to get into that here and i think my two videos from now when i get into data lake and we get into talking about permissions and networking and access control that's going to be a very very important video because when you add additional data lakes it's missing some security components that you need this one is actually already set up for us because when we provisioned our asa workspace if you remember from the provisioning video there were some things that were that happened automatically as part of that provisioning phase but it won't happen for new ones all right so anyway i'm going to go ahead and expand this and when i expand my data lake if i had any data in my containers and inside of my folder right here i can go in and i can look at that now the thing to keep in mind right here is that this is not something that we did in our class but i can able you know i can drill in i can take a look at it or in this series but in our next video we're going to actually get in here and i'm going to show you how to create these containers how to upload files how to download files how to work with this entirely right and how to do that with azure storage explorer as well and so we're going to dive a little deeper but this is the data lake and this is how you get there through the data hub under the develop hub this is where under the develop hub this is where you can create sql scripts uh, custo ql you can do notebooks data flow apache job definitions so you can do a lot of stuff here the primary things you'll be doing here is sql scripts notebooks and data flows depending on your role within your organization right if i'm a data scientist i'm probably going to be doing a lot with sql scripts and notebooks if i'm an engineer i'm going to be doing a lot with sql scripts and data flows if i'm an analyst i'm going to be just doing sql scripts to do these kind of ad hoc queries against my data to kind of explore the data go through that discovery phase right and we're going to talk about that because that's one of the coolest features in synapse analytics is that ability to query data using serverless on demand to query my data that's in my data lake that is awesome right there all right so under integrate this is where i can create my pipelines you can click right here create a pipeline creating a pipeline is very much like creating an ssis package it's very much like in some ways you can almost relate it to power automate if you're familiar with that or logic app it's very much an orchestration tool it's a workflow right uh, down here we have our monitoring hub and then we also have our manage hub and that's it so what we're going to do as we progress through this series is next the next couple of videos we're going to dive in and start talking about data lake how do i what is data lake how do i work with it what are the different purposes and then the next video we're going to get into permissions where we talk about networking and like access control very important topics because once again if you add data lakes to your asa workspace you're going to notice that you can't do certain things and then you have to figure it out anyway so i'm going to kind of preemptively help you out with that and then we'll continue this series all right this was once again a shorter video than some of the other ones in this series which are going to be quite long but i hope you uh, got a lot from it and i'll see you in the next one